Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 411 from 406. My name is Chewy, and I'm joined once again by my brother from another mother, Mr. Pip. How are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic. It's great to be back in podcasting world. What's going on with you, bro, Cephas? I have one question for you. Yes. Are you ready? Oh, I am <laughs> so ready. I am so ready. I am going to... We're going to bore some listeners tonight, probably, and apologize in advance, but we are definitely going to have to do a bit of a WrestleMania recap because it is the Super Bowl of of sports entertainment. It is the, what do they call it that I really like? It's the um, showdown of the immortals. It is, uh, it is the, the greatest event for nerds like you and I to have to get excited about in a year. So yeah, I definitely want to talk about that. But before we do get to that, because I'm sure that will go on at length, what else is going on? How you been? It's been since the last time we talked, it was the it was the very lengthy opus of a uh, conversation around the Balance album by Van Halen with our good friend Jeff Tyler. Yes, which was an awesome episode. I totally enjoyed doing that. I have listened to it. Um, I, I will I will admit I've probably listened to it twice <laughs> since mm-hmm. we recorded it. But again, that I think that was in February that we recorded that episode. So no. we're sitting here on the 11th. Really? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think it was it like, late, let me take a look. Well, we got, we uh, had alternating spring breaks that, that took it up was, half of our March. Yeah, it was leap day. It was February 29th that we recorded it. I mean, we could round up so. to March 1st. I think that's fair. There you go. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's been a while, but like I said, you, yeah. you had your spring break. I had my spring break. March I did. is a very yeah. special, uh, a very busy time for me work wise. So I was traveling a lot. So we we had a we missed unfortunately a handful of times. But tell me about spring break. How was yours? It was good. So let's see. My my middle son actually has two weeks off. My, my oldest son and youngest son have one week off. And luckily, there was at least one week of overlap there, which is good. My middle boy plays baseball, and so he was only allowed to travel for the second week of his spring break luckily that happened to be the week that the boys the other boys were out so we actually went to vermont we went skiing and it was really cool they got 20 inches of snow the night before we came and so we had powder we had you know a foot plus of snow i don't know if you've ever done any skiing in vermont but it is it's amazing i mean the mountains are ginormous you know, I've, I've really only skied in Northeast Ohio and New York and Pennsylvania. And when you go to Vermont, it is like a, it's a different world. But amazing. We had a wonderful time. My in-laws went with us. We rented a house. We took the dog and we just had an awesome time. I would strongly, highly recommend going to Vermont. It is a beautiful country. Getting there was awesome. The weather was perfect. Once we got there, like I said, we got a bunch of snow and the skiing was outstanding. It was, it was amazing. So nice, man. How, about, uh, how about yours? How, I cool. know you're just on the, you're just kind of getting back. Uh, how was, how was yours? Kind of. Yeah. I'm, I'm wrapping up my first full week back because my spring break, or I should say my children's spring break was last week. So we went down to Anna Maria Island again for the third consecutive year and got a, a place with some friends of ours. And then we had some other friends that were down there. We had some family that was down there. And it's a really cool place. And it seems to be a a significant footprint for Indiana people. I don't know why, but we always bump into people who are um, either from Indianapolis or Bloomington or something along those lines. And we, uh, we had a great time. The weather cooperated uh, almost uh, perfectly the whole, I think we had one day of rain, but that's fine. That was right in the middle. So it it was served as a good break from being outside in the sun, but it was, it was a lot of fun. The kids had a great time. They're at this age. Well, my kids are nine and seven now, so they're at the age where they can be a little bit more independent, but at the same time, still like to have, you know, their their version of going on vacation is just getting to swim somewhere like they still really love that aspect of it. So but we did that at a pool. We did that at the beach and it was definitely a good time. And it was a lot of driving. 
but you know, because yeah. we we made the full trip on the way home, the full sixteen hours. Oh we my left god! It, we left it. So you'd be proud of me. We left at three in the morning on Saturday, and we drove straight through. I mean, obviously we stopped for gas and food and all that, yeah. but we drove all the way straight through and pedal to the metal to try to get back in time for WrestleMania, which we're going to talk about a little later. Now, yeah. unfortunately, no thanks to you, I might add. Uh, I was under the impression that the show is to start at eight o'clock because you I told, thought so, too. You yeah. told me that. <laughs> and it turns out it started at seven. But thank God for for Peacock and digital, you know, streaming services that I was able to rewind and pause, get my kids to bed. And then I ended up staying up till 1230. So. I, I was up wow. a lot of hours that night because I had to finish, you know, night one of WrestleMania. But yeah, at, but, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. But that was um, that was super fun. Had a great trip. Lots of good weather, good times, good people. Good. And uh, yeah, so it was it was awesome. A little bit different from yours, though. Yeah. No, I, I give you a ton of credit. I can't even fathom what a 16 hour drive would be. Uh, we did. Vermont was nine and yeah. on the way out we we broke it up and we spent the night in new york you know five hours away and then on the way back we did it all in one fell swoop and by the time i got home i was like fuck this i want to get out of this car i can't even imagine going another seen hours yeah on top of that so it's, i uh, it, i don't were, were the were the girls good put, they were put great a, put an ipad in front of them and they, yeah exactly you put a tablet in yeah. front of them give them some headphones and they only pipe up once every couple hours to either ask for a snack or tell us they have to pee so it okay. worked out pretty well as far as the road trip goes. There was some traffic, as you might imagine, but yeah, you know, for the most part, it was okay. fine. I think I have a limited number of sixteen-hour road trips left in me. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, we're gonna yeah. have to just bite the bullet and start flying, but it was worth it. I'm trying to think of other things. So, uh, Cleveland hosted the women's final four. Oh, that was in Cleveland. Week. Oh, I didn't know that. That was in Cleveland. Yeah, okay, because the um, men's was in Phoenix, right? But the women's was in correct. Cleveland. Yeah. And so, yeah, so it was, um, I mean, and the, the, the town of Cleveland, I mean, it was, um, it was booming. I mean, you know, you got Caitlin Clark from Iowa making kind of national headlines in terms of how good she is. And then, um, you know, she made it to the finals and she lost to, I don't even remember who she lost. LSU? No, they, South, she beat South LSU. Carolina, I believe. South Carolina. That's right. Because they um, beat IU I've, in the Sweet 16. That's right. That's right. I will admit I didn't watch more than maybe 10 minutes of I watched maybe 10 minutes of the IU game uh, because it was close. It was closer than I thought it was going to be like late yeah. in the game. Yeah, they did good. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was, you know, I, I now I, I will admit I did not follow them during the year, but it sounds like they had a pretty good season, which makes, you know, which makes me very happy. Yeah. Um, and then the the men's final uh, was what last Monday. Correct. Uh, or I guess this past Monday. And, and I so Purdue, it was Purdue and UConn. And I will admit that when I sat down to watch that game, I told myself as I sat down, and I truly believed it, I think, that I didn't really have a rooting interest. I just wanted to see a good basketball game. And as I was watching it, I found myself really happy that Purdue was getting stomped. I don't know what that <laughs> says about me, but but I think my my Hoosier blood runs deep and uh, and it's still there. And I just can't bring myself to root for Purdue at all. That's funny. So, I, I did find myself yeah. a little conflicted and I didn't expect yeah. that. And I'm not super proud of that. But, yeah. you know, if Purdue had won, I, I think for the state of Indiana, it would have been a great thing because there hasn't sure. been a relevant school uh, for basketball in Indiana for a long time, a long time uh, at least 20 years. And, um, you know, Purdue had a great season as much as I hate the fact that they absolutely demolished us twice. Uh, yeah. They they deserve to be in the finals. They deserved everything they got. I thought they would put up a little bit of a better fight, but I mean, UConn is just. I mean, they're they're a juggernaut yeah. these days. They are like the modern day Alabama of football. I feel like they're yeah. always contenders. They're always up there. This they they repeat it right. This is the second straight yeah. year they won the championship. And they're young, aren't they? Like they're not a bunch of seniors. I don't think either. I, I don't know. I, I'm not yeah. that tuned in with them, but yeah. Yeah, so I, you know, I I don't lose sleep over the fact that they lost. But if they had won, then right. for the state, you would of have been Indiana, happy. Okay, I, I think I'd have been okay with it. I'd have been okay. I'd have been annoyed by the insufferable uh, commentary online and by my friends who did go to Purdue, uh, you know, about all of this stuff. But you know, at the same time, it's uh, it, it was a good game at the very least. 
I think. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So uh, it was, it was a busy sports weekend though. That's for sure. It was. And then kind of rounding out the, the kind of big events. And I think you dealt with this too. We had a, we were in the path of totality for a complete solar eclipse on Monday of this week. That's right. I will admit I had never seen one before, or at least I'd never seen a, a, I wasn't, I've never been in the path and going into it. I was kind of ambivalent to it. I was like, yeah, it's going to get dark for four minutes. And it was, I was wrong. It was pretty fucking cool. It was to, amazing. To go outside. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was. So uh, my father-in-law, Larry is a huge astronomy buff. I mean, he is. Mm -hmm. And so we went over to their house and he had his telescope set up and it, it, the, the setup that he had was phenomenal to be able to watch this through his scopes and to get his knowledge. And he's telling us he's explaining things. And, and I mean, it was just, it was more than just dark. I mean, it was so cool. Yeah. I, I can't even really describe how cool it was. We had about four and a half minutes of totality, yeah. which was really, I mean, it was just, I, I can't do it. I can't do it justice. Yeah, that's awesome. Shout out to Larry because he's a great guy and yeah. uh, listens to the podcast every once in a while. I hear. Yes. Didn't invite me to the uh, eclipse party, but hey, no big deal. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I agree. Like I thought, so I have seen a solar eclipse before, although I don't think I was in the path of totality. I was very young. I lived in Texas and the uh, mid eighties. And I remember very distinctly that there was uh, a solar eclipse at the time. And I think what had happened is one of the things that they had us do, like you remember the old style computer printer paper that had all the, the dots on the side, right? You know, like where yes. you, you had to fold and peel off the dots on the dots, yes. computer printers. Um, we had like strips of those and you hold it up to the sun and you, the, the, the shadow on the ground shows the eclipse, which was, which was really, oh, okay. it was like the, the, like the half moon shape or the whatever, whatever stage the eclipse is in. So when you're a kid, I guess that was a cool thing to do, but I, we must not have been in the path of totality or if we were, I don't remember it because this was the coolest, most surreal dreamlike state that I think, yeah. I mean, I, I can't, I don't know a better word to describe it, but it felt like it was in a dream. Like everything was light yeah. and everything went dark and it just stayed there. And it was such a weird feeling to know that it was three 15 in the middle of the day right. and it was dark and all the street lights had come on and yep. then a couple minutes later, it just kind of lifts like a fog. And it's the craziest thing in the world. But I really, really, I I, may, I I judged people improperly because a lot of people have traveled from not only out of town, yep. but out of the country to see this thing. And I judged them for that and maybe still do to a certain extent because I don't think I would travel for it. But it is definitely one of those lifetime bucket list check marks, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so you, you're familiar with Larry's house, uh, Amanda's house that she grew up. So they, they have a pond on their property. And so when, when it went into totality, again, to your point, street lights went on, the bats came out, the crickets, you know, like yeah. it was it, like the, it was, it was, it was crazy. And again, I, if you haven't experienced one, you and I probably sound like two, you know, blithering idiots talking about this thing, but it is, it's really, really cool. And a video doesn't do it justice and a photo doesn't do it justice. Right. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy that I got to live through it. So yeah, it is a really, really neat experience. I totally agree. Yeah. But Hey, there's some other, some other newsworthy events that I feel like we have to recognize. First of all, yeah. as of yesterday, the death of OJ Simpson, Ooh, that's crazy, right? The OJ crazy. has a special place in my yeah. heart, not for, uh, you know, murdering or, or for football, but for, for partially for the naked gun. And yes. also because of how, how popular that whole event was on our dorm floor at Teeter Thompson, uh, fifth floor back in the, uh, the mid nineties when, you know, Mr. Mr. Simpson decided to take a ride in a Bronco across the highway and, and monopolize all of the, uh, public news feeds and it was it was crazy right but yeah i mean that i didn't realize he was sick i didn't know 
Um, Neither did I. Not that he would tell me, but um, right. yeah, I thought that was really crazy that uh, that OJ Simpson at seventy six, he's uh, he's no longer with us. And you know, some people say about like let's say Bobby Knight, right? They say Bobby Knight left a complicated legacy because he was one of the most successful coaches of all time, but also kind of a huge polarizing uh, figure yep. to a lot of people based on the way that he behaved and all that stuff. I don't think you could call OJ polarized, I, or I don't think you could uh, say the same thing about his legacy being complicated because most of the headlines that I have seen have said OJ Simpson uh, slash, uh, you know, acquitted for murder slash in the naked gun slash football player, like in that order, you know, has died. Yeah. And I and I think that's interesting. Have you seen that same thing? I, I have. Um, I, I was, I was, it's funny that you, it's funny that you brought that up because I like you, um, I have very fond memories of OJ, mostly because of Naked Gun and yeah, yeah. At our time at IU. And I think about Steve Wallhammer and, you know, <laughs> just like all of the conversations that we had you sure. know, about OJ. Yeah. And it's weird because I, I think you're right. I think the kind of prevailing thoughts about OJ are he got away with murder, right? I think that's kind of the prevailing thought. That's certainly the way his death has been covered to your sure. point. I don't know that he necessarily did himself any favors after the fact with some of the stuff that he got into. And I know he, there was, there was sports card selling and there was like some other just kind of nonsense. I, I haven't really followed him all that closely. Yeah. I, I guess I would, I would tend to agree with you. I think, I think Bobby Knight, um, you know, if we're going to talk about Bob, I, I, I would agree with you. Bobby's probably, he's, he's complicated. I think, you know, if you're looking at like a sliding scale from like Bobby Knight to like Vince McMahon or Chris Benoit, sure, sure. Like those aren't, those aren't comp, you know what I mean? Like those guys kind of ruined their, their legacy. I think OJ's probably in the middle, but probably closer towards right. Benoit and Vince. Well, it's a bad analogy, but you, you know, I mean, OJ wrote a book called if I did it, Confessions of the Killer. Now, I don't know about right. you, or actually I do right. know about you, but I'm re reasonably confident that if you were accused of murder and you were acquitted, you would probably not turn right around and write a book and write a book. that said, if yeah. I did it, here's how I would have done it. Like, that is insanity. Probably not. And, and this is sort of in the infancy of the internet and pre-social media and all that stuff. So I don't think he had a chance to get roasted or canceled the same way that, you know, somebody would well, but, today. I mean, he eventually was obviously, but you know, it didn't, it didn't resonate the same way back then, but, but before, he, he, he lost a massive civil lawsuit, didn't he? Mm, like massive. Probably. I, I don't know. I thought he did. Like he was acquitted of the, crime but i'm pretty sure he lost a massive lawsuit yeah um it, which is probably why he's trying to capitalize off of this fame yeah, by writing right. this book yes it's it's just pretty crazy but anyway so oj died but i feel like we also have to call out the death of somebody else that that just passed away in in the recent week and it's one that really uh it, it made me a little sad i have to admit mr cj snare the lead singer to firehouse firehouse is obviously a band out of the eighties out of the genre that, that you and I spend a lot of time swimming around in. And of course, firehouse is known for their power ballads, which is another thing that you and I both certainly like a lot. And uh, unfortunately yes. he also passed away after a battle of cancer. It sounds like in his mid sixties, maybe. And uh, that was really sad, you know, like we're, I guess we're officially at that age where, the hair band bands are are going to start to yeah. that point where they're going to start getting cancer. And I mean, some of them have already gotten it and, and, and beaten it. And, you know, like there was Ricky rocket, I think that yep. from poison, the drummer who, who had some cancer and, and got through it and is in remission and has been back on tour and all that stuff. But yeah, it was really sad. I, I was really bummed to hear that note, that news that, uh, that CJ had passed away. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, un unfortunately, I think you know, 
key and and they are a band that probably don't in my opinion don't get the credit they deserve because of when they came along yeah they've got some amazing songs right not just their ballad stuff but i mean they've got some amazing songs and he was a really really good singer and i don't know i kind of hope that that maybe history will now that he's gone maybe look back on him and look back on that band maybe a little bit give them the the credit maybe that they deserve as you know at you know through the through yeah. the uh, with the benefit of hindsight yeah. i hope so the the one good thing to come from someone like this and their untimely passing is that this is when a lot of people you know make it a point to try to to comment publicly about you know what they thought of these individuals and stuff like you know when eddie van halen died everybody was coming out of the woodworks to say what a great guy he was and how humble he he was and all that stuff and you know i've seen a lot of really great stuff tweeted about cj snare and uh, you know that makes me feel good that that people yeah. uh do think about him and they miss him and and it's uh it's a legacy that i think that uh is unfortunate it's not around to enjoy anymore yeah for sure couple couple more things i did want yeah. to uh i want to shout out really quick uh a buddy of mine who uh, has uh has subscribed and listens to this podcast all the way out in phoenix which is really really crazy uh, his name is Sundown, and his uh, wife, uh, Nariza, who I got to meet uh, a couple weeks ago when I was in Phoenix for work. And Sundown's a great guy. He's become a good buddy of mine, and he's a bourbon connoisseur, and uh, we've been working together for a couple years. And he says he listens to the podcast, and I, I find it hard to believe because I feel like you and I are the only ones that usually listen to the podcast. But he, uh, you know, he was very complimentary over a lot of the stuff that we did and talked about. He he got at least a good chunk of the way through the Van Halen one, which you got to really be a fan to get through that one because that's yeah. a hardcore nerd episode. But I wanted to say hey to Sundown and uh, and Narisa for uh, for being listeners to the podcast, which is super awesome. That's us. That's outstanding. I love. I mean, it. our reach is uh, really far out west. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. We need some viral marketing to, to start happening. <laughs> um, but there was that. And then I also wanted to say, cause this is one thing that we have not spoken about. I don't believe I did go see, uh, the new Ghostbusters movie, Frozen Empire. Did you? I did. Okay. I did. And, um, I, you know, don't want to turn this into a review of that movie, but I will say that they did a reasonable job of trying to make up for the things that I, was very critical about in the first movie, which was the lack of integration of the OG characters along with the newer cast. They did a much better job of that this time around. Okay. Specifically okay. Dan Aykroyd, a little bit Ernie Hudson, Bill Murray just kind of still shows up, wakes up, does his, you know, his funny lines and goes back to bed. But, okay. you know, they, they did um, make it feel a little bit more, meshed with the ghostbusters legacy the, the the lore if you will okay and being back in new york uh, i think helped a lot which was um which was good and you know it i gotta be honest though it's not a great movie it's a it's a bit of a sloppy story and there were definitely too many characters a lot of new ones on top okay. of the the old ones but I, I think it did recapture some of the charm the jokes hit a little bit better for me in this one. I mean, okay. they tried the jokes a, a little harder, I think, than they did in the last movie. So, yeah, I mean, I thought it was okay. I, I would be interested if if you took the opportunity to go see it, you know, just to see if I'm way off on this one or whether you would agree. The, the feedback that I have seen, and I've tried to stay away from a lot of it, but the feedback that I've seen has not been stellar. But I don't care because right. I want to go. I want to go see that movie and experience it because I enjoy the franchise. I, you know, I mean, again, we've talked on the podcast about our thoughts about the the um, both of the the two most recent ones since since the OGs. So where, kind of real quick off the top of your head, there's there's been five Ghostbuster movies now. Where where do you put this one? Or well, Number not four. counting. No, well, if you want to count the girls one, I'll count that one. But that's um, this is technically number four in the in the series of stories. In that, okay, all right, yeah. 
So And I know you didn't like that one. I know you didn't like the the female one, right? And it had nothing uh, to do with the fact that it was female. You I, just didn't care for that one. I just I didn't think the comedy hit at all. I, I've been yelled yeah. at okay. about this uh, a couple times. No, that's fine. no yeah. I did not care for it. I did not think it was funny. Um, it missed the mark for me on a lot of levels, but I would say one, two, four, three, maybe in terms of rewatchability. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard. Okay. I don't think, I don't think two is a great movie, but I also think that it is still in the era, you know, it's in the okay. late eighties. It came out at a time where those guys were still young and there's some really good jokes out of it. Even if the movie is yeah. kind of cheesy. I mean, they were okay. directing the statue of Liberty with a yeah. Nintendo controller, Nintendo? if I remember yeah. correct. So yeah. Yeah, that was a little that was a little rough. Okay. But. So you so you think you think this this most recent one then is better than the first Paul Rudd one? I think it's more rewatchable. I'll be honest, okay. I think the other movie was better. I think Afterlife was a better movie in terms of story. Um okay. I was all with Afterlife and until they just rolled everybody out at the end and then it, it just at the really, very end. Okay. It just it bummed me out because I think they could have played it much smarter than that. But I, I did enjoy the other parts of that movie. They lifted heavily okay. from the original Ghostbusters, obviously, because they did the whole yeah. Zool thing again. But uh, this movie is a little braver in that it takes a different. It doesn't. It, it doesn't do what you might think it does. It doesn't go back to Ghostbusters two and try to resurrect uh, um, Vigo or Vigo? any of that <laughs> stuff. I mean, there okay. there are a couple cameos that I wasn't expecting uh, that were kind of fun, but you know, for the most part, it was it's own movie with just the okay. older generation of characters. So I, okay. I'll be interested to see if and where it goes from here. Like, can they okay. make more sequels with this cast? Um, you know, will the, uh, the original Ghostbusters, will they participate? I don't know. I'm not really sure. I, I agree. I saw some really crappy reviews with this movie, but yep. I think maybe because I went in with the bar low enough, it, it was a good time. I didn't mind it at all. I will, I'll tell you what I will do. I will effort to see that movie before we chat again, uh, because it is, it's something that it's, it is a, it's a movie that I want to see. And we've just, I've, I've had so much stuff going on um, between spring break and, and just yeah. kind of all this other nonsense in my world. And now we're in the middle of baseball season. And, and anyways, real one last thing before yes. we get into WrestleMania, you, you mentioned, you mentioned, you gave a shout out to, to a, a friend of yours in Arizona. I have to tell you. So I, when I record or when we record the podcast, you do your editing wizardry and you send me the file and then, and then I post it. We use Podbean as is kind of our platform. And then we put that out to Spotify and all the other platforms, iTunes and what have you. And then I also put the video, I put the video on rumble and YouTube as well. And on the the Van Halen episode, so that was episode 89, there was a commenter from from Brazil really? that left several comments on that episode. Yes. And he so he gave he told us, you know, he gave me not only the um the balance tour set list, so he so he listed out all 20 songs in that set list. But he said one comment, he said, he said, if you listen to this album very carefully, if you pay attention to the meaning of the song, you'll realize that Sammy knew that his tenure with the band was about to end. There's too much suffering. There's too much pain, disenchantment expressed on the lyrics. And I believe there was so much bad blood on the backstage behind the scenes during the recording and their personal lives as well. So I just I don't know. I thought that was very insightful and it went right along with what you and Jeff and I were had kind of picked up as we were listening to it. Um, so again, I just wanted to give a shout out. It's Mauricio four seven one on YouTube. Thank you for listening. Thank you for commenting all the way from Brazil. I thought that was super cool. Dude, that's amazing. That means we're global. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. We should get some world yes. tour t shirts yeah. at this point. No, that's that. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you for for commenting on it. That's that's really cool that we've reached that far and that there are yeah not just not just that but that there are, are van halen fans that that span the globe that are interested in the same kind of stuff that we are i think that's amazing yeah yeah so all right so is it, it's main event time, it, huh? it is let's 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 <laughs> let's give mauricio a chance to hit the stop button because uh you know we have to talk about wrestlemania it is it is the big event unfortunately this is the what the third consecutive year or fourth that we haven't been able to watch uh, it together at this point. Cause we didn't get, or did we get, did we get COVID? Did we get, we've had one since COVID. We have had one. 
And then my kids got old enough for spring break and I, I got bulldozed by that every year, but yeah, yes, this was WrestleMania 40. So the 40th anniversary of this event, which obviously started uh, way back in 1984 uh, happened. And it was by all accounts, a huge, huge event. And I've got all kinds of comments and questions. I mean, where do we even start with this thing? Well, let's see. I I don't know that we necessarily need to go like match by match and, and those kind of things, but there's, I do think it's kind of important that we talk about, talk about the makeup of the card. Did, did you go back and listen to any of our commentary or any of our predictions kind of coming into WrestleMania season? I will admit I didn't, but I do remember kind of where we, where we stood. I, I did not go back and listen to anything specifically, okay. but I, feel uh, a strong need to toot my own horn because I, I do think that I sort of, I don't know if I predicted, but I did one of those, how cool would it be segments on yes if, if they did this Avengers end game type, you know, ending to the, to the final match at WrestleMania where all of these people came out, all of these people that the bloodline have, have wounded over the years and, and, you know, put under their boots, they came out to help Cody Rhodes win this title. And I don't think I got the lineup correct, but the concept of it was something that I had mentioned Yeah, at, at least a month ago, I think, m- maybe a little bit longer. And that's kind of what they did. And I'm super excited because yes. now it makes me feel like I could get a job in creative for WWE, which is never going to happen. You, you absolutely but could. I feel like I could. You absolutely could. So I guess kind of some, some um, just kind of general notes. So again, we they were in Philadelphia. It was on April 6th and April 7th. They were outside. They were playing at Lincoln field, which is where the Eagles play. And this is, this is the first WrestleMania and they beat us over the head with it, but it's the first WrestleMania where Vince McMahon is not there. So this is, well, did they beat the us first... over the head with that? Or did they very subtly, or did they do that subtly, but more specifically try to usher in this new era that is, yes, they, yes, that is, we don't it, know what we're right. calling it yet, but it is basically the Paul Levesque era, triple H. Yes. That's really what they leaned on very heavily in the hall of fame yes. and on both Saturday and Sunday of WrestleMania. Yes. Uh, yeah, you're right. It, it wasn't so much the absence of Vince. It was, this is a new direction. This is a new era. This is the triple H era. I, you know, I think obviously if you know, and if you can read between the lines, that's what they're saying. They're distant. They're distancing them, themselves from Vince, but you know, so here's, so neither, neither you or I watched the beginning of the show live. You were in route from Florida back to Indiana. I was actually at a baseball game but we both have gone back subsequently and rewatched stuff. I was a little bit surprised that the intro of the show was quote unquote, only triple H coming out, welcoming us to WrestleMania Mm -hmm. and, and starting the show. I wasn't disappointed, especially with what we, uh, you know, what they they were trying to do, right. They're trying to introduce this new era and, and those kind of things. But it wasn't the, you know, the, re- the, the WrestleMania of the past where you have, you know, big time acts and, and legends come back. It wasn't the rock and stone cold and Hulk Hogan in the ring all at once. It was, you know, like it wasn't, it, it wasn't the Miz or, uh, or a celebrity like being the host. It was just a, it was a straight up welcome to WrestleMania. We're going to, we're going to let the professional wrestling tell the show, tell the story and and here it is. And I don't know. What you what do you think about that? Did you like it? Did you not like about? It? Did you miss anything? What, what what were your thoughts on that kind of opening? Yeah. So I loved it. I thought it was great. I do think that they have done at least a version of that over the last couple of years because I think Triple H has come out and done the whole welcome to WrestleMania thing, and I think he's going to continue to do that. That's going to be sort of yeah. his spot and their tradition. I don't favor. I don't dislike, but I don't see any usefulness in having a host of WrestleMania, like when they do the Miz thing and when they did Hogan a handful of years ago and all of that, like I, I, it doesn't add anything for me. I want the wrestling. I want to get right into everything. That's what they did. And I think it worked really, really well this time. Yeah, I would agree. I, I, to me, the host spot has always been, how do we get somebody 
involved or on the card that can't have a legitimate wrestling spot. Exactly. Right? And right. So it has been, it has been the Miz. And again, I don't think that's, that's not in my opinion, that's not because he couldn't wrestle. I think it's just like, he didn't have a program that year. Other years, what it was, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the Patriot, um, uh, what was the guy's name? Um, um, the tight end. Gronk. Gronk. Okay. He, right. Okay. He was doing okay. it. He did it once. I think Hogan did it once. Mm-hmm. Right. Wasn't, um, wasn't the Miz he, the ho- Didn't they do it in Hollywood the year that Miz was there or no? Cause they might, that might've been might the tie in. Maybe. I don't yeah. remember. But again, I, I, it's a long way of saying, I agree with you. I, yeah. I've never really liked the host thing. I thought they did a anger of a job on both nights getting out of the gate quickly yeah. with an amazing match. To st- so we started right mm-hmm. out of the gate with Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch, which I- I'm a big fan of having like a really good match up front. I, I like, I thought it was good, but having learned that Becky Lynch was actually real life kayfabe, like sick, it's like she had had like yeah. a, what did they say? Um, it's strep. Strep or strep something like that. I yeah. felt like, and maybe they put it in my head and I just didn't realize it, but I felt like she was off that night. I didn't feel like she was as quick and as snappy as she usually is. Okay. I thought the match was good. I don't have any issues with the match, but it was clearly a Rhea Ripley match. I don't think it was yeah. as, as much of a contest. And at no point did I ever think that Rhea Ripley was going to lose that match. I just didn't, I didn't feel it. I, I would agree with that. And I guess what we what we don't know and we, what we may not ever know is how how that match was changed or was it changed based on how uh, Becky was feeling. I, I don't know. I, I I don't think it was my changed. Gut tells me, I think it yeah. just altered her performance. And I think, yeah. again, I don't think it was bad. I just expect I hold her to a really high bar because she's a fantastic mm-hmm. talent. And when she gets in the ring. And the spots seem like they're a little bit lethargic or delayed, or there was there was a couple of them that felt like they were not as smooth as they could have been. I don't want to say missed yeah. or botched or anything like that, but it just didn't feel as clean and as tight as I would expect from her at the biggest event of the year. And and I yep. think that that's probably due to that, you know, for her for her being sick because she is an A list talent, like she absolutely yes. brings that to the table even in a, a you know monday night raw or a friday night smackdown like she will do that so i i chalk it up to that it's bad timing i think did you by chance watch she was on ariel hawani's podcast mm-hmm. about the week before did you by chance watch that or listen to clips of that or whatever i, I didn't i just started listening to the, the wrestling parts of his podcast which i think are okay. really interesting and he gets a lot of really good interviews he does. So I just, I just listened to the CM Punk interview mm-hmm. that it was making all these waves. I listened to it today. It was, it was, he was on there for well over an hour. Yeah. It was great. And Punk answered a lot of questions that like you typically don't see him answer. And yeah, it was anyways, plug, plug to Ariel Wahalani. He's a really good interviewer. He knows his shit True. primarily an MMA guy, but he clearly is balls deep into wrestling too. And, and again, Becky was on that podcast just recently. Oh, so. that's cool. Let's see. Uh, Next up, we got a six pack ladder match. We got um, Austin Theory and Grayson Waller versus The Miz and Our Truth versus Finn Balor and Damian Priest versus Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Campa versus Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods versus Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate. So this was one of those. Hey, let's let's throw everybody into a match. Multiple tag teams in the ladder match for both tag team titles which at the time started out unified and then they're splitting them up i'm not typically a huge fan of these kind of schmaz matches this one was pretty good you know for what it was um well you I started I don't, I don't have a ton to say you started yeah. after like you picked up on the broadcast on night one after this match was done right so did you go back and watch this match I did. I did. I thought it was uh, really I, yeah, good I did. for for being. Did you enjoy it? Okay. For being yeah. one of those like like whatever it was eight ten men tag matches. Like yeah. I, there were a couple spots that were amazing in that match in terms yeah. of when J D McDonough gets dumped off that ladder through a table to the ground through the table. Like, I thought yeah. I thought some he was of those fucked. spots were really yeah. good overall as a match. It's kind of like man whatever. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 
I, I just thought the that was the one the one match of the event where people were like holy shit you know, like cheering yeah holy shit because yeah so it's crazy stuff going on so it's 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 important i think to point out night one the crowd i think in general was dead um yeah. but it was cold as balls that night yeah. it was like 40 degrees and i can't even fathom sitting outside watching a wrestling show when it's 40 you know so yeah they, they were dead but to your point yeah the crowd was pretty hot this night and again the fact that i don't typically like these kind of matches is in no way reflective of my feelings towards the performance like they yeah they did they did some amazing stuff i'm just you know i'm not really invested in tag team wrestling in general but no yeah, you're right i did not watch this live um, i didn't watch this i i didn't start the not one until the fourth match so uh i got one more match that i didn't watch live ray mysterio and andrade versus um santos escobar and and dominic mysterio yeah again I, take it or leave it there's no title on the long line yeah. there's no real story i mean there's a little bit of backstory but it's you know you got dominic and ray obviously the big thing here was jason kelsey and another philly uh guy came out of the crowd i i don't i i Take it or leave it for this one for me. What wasn't terrible, but it was yeah, it was just there. Yeah, that was one of those that it just felt. I don't know. It felt really weird. I didn't necessarily agree with the decision to shoehorn Jason Kelsey in there. I know he's kind of like a big thing right now, and he's obviously in Philadelphia. Right. But I don't know. Of all the guest stars that I would have liked to have seen that maybe have had some kind of tie to Philadelphia, he's not high on my list, but. You know, no offense to him. I like he's he's great. He's fine. Yeah. But yeah, that that whole thing was just like totally kind of telegraphed. I thought as soon as I saw those mask guys, you know, coming out of the crowd and all that, like you knew it was right. Jason Kelsey. I thought it was going to be his brother that was the other one. I didn't Travis, realize yeah. it was going to be someone else. But yeah, but Rey yeah. Mysterio, like I like Rey Mysterio. I think he's been a great wrestler for many many years. But the guy is almost fifty years old. And I'm wondering, yeah. like, how long are we doing this? Like, how long is Ray going to continue to wrestle? Because Hall of Fame guy, he's he's a great talent, but I, I don't know. I feel like that just kind of took up a spot on the card that didn't need to be taken. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I would, I, I would tend to agree with you. You know, I mean, may, maybe there's one more program with him and Dom, but I, I that's all he's got. Like, why done it? Why would anybody? Done, yeah, do it? exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. So, um, okay. So next up, the fourth match on the card with Jay and Jimmy Uso, brother versus brother. This one going into it, I was, I'll be honest with you. I was excited about it and it was just kind of meh. It was there. I, I, I read some reviews of this show and nobody seemed to like this match. And I don't know why either. Cause they should have good chemistry. They, they know each other, obviously they're brothers. There's storyline there in theory. I, it was just kind of there for me. I didn't really care. So I have a lot of feelings about this match. First of all, it's the one that fucked me the most on our confidence pool, which yes. before we go any further, I will extend my congratulations to one Chewy who won our confidence pool for the second year in a row. Uh, pretty sure he cheated or manipulated this spreadsheet somehow. But this match is the one that kind of screwed me because uh, well, first of all, I agree with you. It wasn't that great of a match. I don't think it had enough of a buildup. I think they rushed yeah. to it too quickly. I think it was completely dwarfed by uh, the Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes story. I mean, that was obviously the one that was going to headline everything. And, and this one just didn't really have any any relative stakes. Like they should have they should have built a program for these two brothers for, you know, a year. They should have they could have done yeah. it that long to have this epic match because I do think both of those wrestlers are talented enough, but I just don't, they're very, they're very good. I, I don't, I don't, I, I think they were all afterthoughts and I, my biggest problem with this is the fact that Jimmy won and, and not, or I'm sorry, Jay won, not because uh, I lost in the confidence pool, but because it made right. zero sense whatsoever to, Put Jay over in this match. Jay is as over as it could possibly be. Every time he comes out, the entire crowd is into it. They should have put Jimmy over. That I mean, they should have reinforced how dominant the bloodline is and has been, and would have done a great job of that. 
if if Jimmy had won that match and for whatever reason they decided not to and it just felt like wait what like I, is that yeah. the end of it like they could have kept this feud going into SummerSlam and maybe even done a rematch but now nobody cares about it because Jay already won like there's that's it's gone like there's no interest in that anymore for me I don't know do you agree or or no I, I yeah I do um I you know I I didn't. To me, this has always seemed like a match where they're not they're not truly adversaries, right? They're 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 brothers that are fighting, right? And like I I don't I, like I can't really explain it. I I I I fully expect them to be fighting side by side again someday in the future oh, sure. there's no doubt in my mind and and because of that this just kind of is a speed bump in whatever story they're telling if that makes you know like there's no real i don't know yeah I, it's it's tough to explain yeah but it felt and, and again on top of that yeah it did yeah. yeah it did okay so then next up is uh jade cargill bianca belair and naomi all three of whose are just absolutely ripped all three of those oh, yeah. girls versus damage control with his, which is Dakota, uh, Asuka and Kyrie Sane. Um, another match that I didn't really care for. I think it was the shortest match on the card. It was only about eight minutes long. I think that's probably about where it should be. I think they deserve their spot on the card, but for me, I just, I didn't really care. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's forgettable. I, remember who won only because I was invested yeah. in it, but I don't remember a thing about the match. Yeah. Um, Jake Cargill is supposed to be the next big thing on the women's side. And I think it'll be fun when they turn her against Bianca. Eventually. I think that has to be a thing, but as yep. of right now, I don't think anybody thought that damage control was going to win that match. And no. them as a faction don't interest me at all. And they got no. infinitely less interesting when Bailey left. So, yes. They've got yeah, they, to break they, that up and they've they, got to figure out a different faction idea for the women's division. Well, and they, they had between them, they had a really bad weekend well, <laughs> damage control. They had a really, and we'll get mm -hmm. into it. They had a really bad weekend. Next up on the card might be my favorite match of the weekend. Whoa. It might, it might be. Um, it's Sammy Zayn versus Gunther. I love both of these performers. I know I, picked uh i don't know i i was i was really surprised that sammy won I, I i genuinely didn't think he was going to i thought they were going to continue gunther moving forward i thought they were going to keep him strong he already had the title the, the longest title reign yeah Th this was you know obviously you get the the cody feel good moment but this this to me was the feel good moment of wrestlemania i just i loved this match I thought it was a good match. I was disappointed when Sammy won, A, because I, I did not pick Sammy, and B, because I knew that would probably screw me for Kevin Owens as well, because th those, oh, yeah, yeah. those two are kind of synonymous, right? And I didn't expect both of them to come out of WrestleMania with a title. And so when Sammy won, I was like, ah, shit, now that's going to that's gonna really shit all over that. But... I, I do like Sammy. I think they've they've done some weird stuff with him lately in the last couple of months and and didn't really build it as logically as I thought that they would. But I'm, you know, overall, I'm I'm good with it because it gives him something to do. He's clearly a fan favorite, but probably never going to be like the guy. He's not going to be the the mm -hmm. one that. Obviously, he wasn't the one that took the belt off of Roman and is not going to be the face of the company, but they recognized that he has a lot of appeal to a lot of fans, so they gave him this belt, and and yeah, it was definitely a feel-good moment. I don't know if it was the best match, but I definitely think that it was a good match, and this frees up Gunther to do other things like go after Cody Rhodes. Like, that's absolutely going to be a thing. I don't know how soon, but it's going to be there because yeah. he's a he's a great foil to someone like Cody for sure. Yeah, he he is. Yeah, and and, and put put a pin in that. We'll we'll come back to okay. kind of what's what's next after WrestleMania, and, and then last but certainly not least, 
on the night was the bloodline, the rock and Roman reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins, the rock and Roman reigns win that match, which then subsequently sets up quote unquote bloodline rules for Sunday night with rock and Roman. You know, they're, they're talking about this as the greatest tag team match in WrestleMania history. I think it's probably, it's argu- I think it probably is. I go, I guess maybe the only argument to that might be last year when you had Sammy and KO defeating the bloodline. I would argue that one was much better only because there was no doubt in anybody's mind who was going to win. And, and you can't, I mean, you can, this one, you mean, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. And, and, uh, the, uh, the rock and Roman versus Cody and Seth, there was no doubt who was going to win that match. And that doesn't mean that the match itself isn't going to be good, but it does take away a, a percentage of enjoyment. If, if you will, when you know how it's going to end, like it, yeah. maybe you don't know how it's going to end, but you know that it's going to end um, with, you know, a certain group of winners. And that was disappointing to me that they even made that match. I understand that they wanted to get the rock involved and there's this, you know, I'm sure we'll get to it, but there's, you know, once we get to the Cody rock and all that stuff and, and how mm-hmm. they had to pivot and how they brought the rock back to fight Roman, but then they, they changed that because they listened to the crowd and, put Cody back in it, but you know, it's good that they got the rock involved in WrestleMania. And I thought he did pretty good in that match. Yeah. But there was no mystery behind how that was going to end. Like it just there, you know, it was very clear to me. And and that, that kind of bums me out a little bit. Like when they're, when the stakes are already firmly set at that point, it's, yep. it, it's not as enjoyable, especially because, you know, the rock is older. Like he's not, He's not as quick and as snappy as he used to be. So it's, it's kind of like, okay, let's just get through this. It doesn't really mean anything. So, yeah. And so that was a, I mean, officially that was a 44 minute match, which is crazy. (laughs) That is crazy. That is a long time. Yeah. Yeah. It it is. It is. Especially when you consider like, even after all the shenanigans on night two, that was 10 minutes, 11 minutes longer than night two. Night twos was only 33 minutes. Oh, really? Wow, that's, yeah, that's, oh, the yeah. main event on night yeah. two was less than that one. Okay. Yeah. Which is, yeah. which is really uh, crazy when we get to it, when we talk about everybody right. who showed up. So, okay. So you had seven matches on night one. What, uh, what's your favorite match out of night one? Mm, good question. Well, like I said, there were some really good spots in that tag match, but I would say probably the match that stuck out to me the most was probably that I, I have to kind of side with you on this one. I think that the Gunther and Sami Zayn match was probably the most entertaining, okay. mostly because I was pretty sure Gunther would win. And I was wrong about that. And and I love that. I love being wrong about all my picks. Well, yeah. not when John Cena is on the line, but uh, right. you know, we won our trophy, but um yeah, I, I thought for sure he was going to win, and that was a good match. It was a fun one to watch. They they both did really great. So that was probably my my highlight for night one. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And are you are you with me too on on your least favorite match being Jay and Jimmy? Yes, not only least favorite yeah. but most annoying because that I think that yeah. would have really changed the tide for my pool because I'm like yeah, oh no, no I'm, it, yeah, I'm a smartened up fan like I know how this is yeah. gonna work there's no reason for them to do that then they did it that pissed me off yeah so yeah okay so so night two um the weather is much better it's much warmer I think it's 11 or 12 degrees warmer yeah. and you could tell right out of the gate the crowd was electric coming into huge night two I will be honest with you. I was shocked when none other than Stephanie McMahon Helmsley came out to open night two of WrestleMania. I did not think even if she had anything officially to do with the company anymore, which I didn't think she did, but maybe now I am hearing that she is. I didn't think that they would trot any McMahon out at all. I was happy to see her. I thought she did great. Um, I don't know. What What do you think? Good, bad, positive, negative about Stephanie? I think she did phenomenal, a, a phenomenal yeah. job with uh, with her piece in the ring there. I thought it was great to see her. Like, I thought it was really fun to see Triple H open night one and her open night two. 
what I really wondered about that whole situation was what does Vince think about that? Because it's one thing to have Triple H out there. He, he's he's the yeah. head of oh, I don't remember his title. He he was the head of creative. He's CEO, chief content officer. Chief content officer. Chief content I knew it was something officer. weird. Yeah. Um, but to have Stephanie out there is different because talk about bloodline. That's bloodline right there. Yeah. And Vince has been yeah. canceled, banished, ostracized. He's gone from everything WWE related. So I imagine on some level that could have been hard for Stephanie to be out there to, to do this whole, like, I'm going to cut a promo on this crowd in front of the biggest event of the year. But my dad, who really is responsible for all of this, doesn't, yeah, you know, is, is being put behind the curtain. He's not allowed to be a part of this. He's not getting any of the recognition. I imagine that's really hard for her. So my heart kind of went out for her, but I would agree with you that it was a really cool way to start the night. And I hope they do it again. I, I thought it was awesome. Do you think there's any chance that Vince was there? No, I don't. No. Okay. I mean, it, it's entirely possible, but I think when you say there, you mean like hidden in the seat in the balcony, or do you mean, like I mean, yeah, gorilla? I mean, physically there. Well, but I mean, like well, in I, what I mean, capacity I mean, though, like in gorilla or like in somewhere else, like in a seat, in a suite. Oh, Oh, I don't know. I don't think he would ever be at a seat. No, I mean, I mean, they're backstage. No, I don't think so, because I think that would have yeah. absolutely been leaked and somebody would okay. have got a, uh, you know, a screen, a selfie or whatever. Yeah. Something would have happened and and that would have been all over the news and that would have shit all over that weekend for sure. Yeah, I think he, you know, I, I don't know if that was even an option for him, but if it was, I'm sure he would have declined. Yeah. So, okay. um, okay. Yeah, but I loved it. I love Stephanie being out there. I thought it was great. I hope it's not the last time we see her on WWE programming in the near future. Uh, b- before we go through w- with night two, did you go? Did you watch any of the Hall of Fame stuff? The uh, yeah, I skimmed through it. The the one thing I did watch did was Paul Heyman's induction, which was yeah. fantastic. It was, was amazing. It? Okay. He is a phenomenal orator he is his speech i think you would love it because i think you probably i mean you kind of watched a little bit of ecw back in the day oh i right? did yeah yeah mm-hmm. so i mean yeah. a lot of that and i didn't realize this before they had drawn attention to it but like ecw was kind of based in philly i think like just not, oh, just yeah. on the road yep. from where they were and so yep. It was a really sweet idea to induct Paul Heyman in the Philadelphia edition of WrestleMania yeah. because that's where ECW came from. And, you know, Stephanie McMahon was sitting next to uh, her husband and she was wearing an ECW like hat. Which, I saw that picture. Which was yeah, really cool. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and uh, Heyman made a joke about uh, Stephanie's finally realizing she married the wrong Paul and it was, oh. it was really good, but like he totally, he went into it. He went into his, his shtick, you know, like as soon as he, he pulls out this, uh, this box full of memorabilia and he's got an ECW hat, he's got his big black leather trench coat. Oh, he's and he put his, the trench coat on his phone awesome. and all this stuff. And he goes into, you know, Paul Heyman mode and he, he, he cuts a great promo and, and okay. uh, yeah, absolutely. You have to go back and watch that. It's really good okay. to really get a grasp of how important Paul Heyman is uh, to the wrestling business, you know, to guys like CM Punk, to guys like Brock Lesnar, to guys like Roman Reigns. Um, he has been a huge contributor to that. His his brain in terms of the the world and the business of wrestling is is unparalleled and and you really get a good sense of that if you watch that induction speech so then just like we did on night one we start out and we come out of the gate firing yes we've got a world championship holy shit match. what a what a start right? to night two i mean yes. please go ahead yes. but holy crap blew my mind great 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 yeah. match yeah so we get we get drew mcintyre versus Seth Rollins for the world heavyweight championship. Drew gets his WrestleMania moment. I mean, this was, this was just finisher after finisher after finisher. After, I mean, it was trading back. And um, forth. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was outstanding. I loved it. I called it. I thought Seth was going to lose. 
I've got nothing but respect for Seth Rollins. That dude is a war horse. He's been working hurt for the majority of the year now. Turned that title, which was brand new, turned it into something that mattered. And I, I was even in defeat. I thought he was awesome. I was, and we'll see Seth Rollins again in a really important role here in the main event. But I thought his, his outing here was simply outstanding. I, and I, I just, I loved this match. I thought it was great. Yeah. I obviously completely agree. My two favorite wrestlers in the business right now are uh, Rollins and, and Kevin Owens. I, I think they are just complete workhorses and they do everything they can. They throw themselves out you know, in front of everybody to, to get the result that they're looking for. And it's, it's phenomenal. The the product is better because of those two guys. Seth is, I agree. I also, um, I also picked Seth to lose that, but not because, you know, he's not a great talent, but because I think he's ready for something else and they have to move him on from that. Not to mention, I think that Drew McIntyre, has really earned his stripes over the past couple of months. And I have been very blase, very vanilla on Drew McIntyre for a long time. But the last couple of months, he has really picked it up. And I remember I texted you. I'm like, you got to watch some of these promos that he's cut on Monday Night Raw because they are fucking amazing. I mean, he's doing yeah. it with CM Punk. He's doing it with Cody Rhodes. Like there's there's some collaboration there, but like, He's to the point now where I'm like, yes, give him the belt. Let him do the thing. Yeah. And they did. And I was really happy. And then, <laughs> you know, here comes Damian Priest, comes down with the money in the bank briefcase and cashes it in and makes Drew's reign as world champion very, very short. Yeah. So let me take a step back. Drew McIntyre has been, in my opinion, the best heel in the WWE since the Royal Rumble. Like, no, nobody, nobody's better. He's been maybe the rock, but again, the rock is just well, Roman, you know, but I mean, he's, anyways. he's sort of like right. default. Well, but, but again, if you, if you think about what Roman has done just since from the rumble to now, I think Drew's better because Roman hasn't really done shit. I mean, he hasn't really done much, well, a whole lot. Yeah. Quantity versus you know, quality. That's um, fair. Right. But I mean, the, 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 the promos that Drew McIntyre has cut, the shirt, the picture of him, you know, he's wearing a shirt with, you know, CM Punk's WrestleMania, uh, whatever, like in a, a gravestone. Um, yeah, he he did great. And and I'm not a fan of Damian Priest. So when he came out to cash in, I was I'm like, fuck, he's going to win. And of course he did. Um, but here's here's where I think it's actually brilliant from a booking perspective. So now you've got you've got built in stories between you've got. Drew and Punk, you've got Drew and Sand, uh, Damian Priest, you've got Damian Priest and Punk. Like there's there's a bunch of stories there that I think if you just had Drew win straight up and then keep it, I, I don't know that you had as many different potential storylines coming out. Sure. So I think I, I think it, it was a good spot. I I actually was not predicting, but I was, I said, well, what if he Damian priest did the same thing on Cody Rhodes because the heat would be oh, atomic. Jesus Christ it would have atomic would is have a great been, adjective for that. Yeah. By the way, it, it would have been. Uh, and again, I, I, you know, I don't know if they considered that, but again, congrats to Damian priest. It'll be interesting to see how long he holds that. Is he just a transitional champion? I got to think that, Drew McIntyre is going to get one of the upcoming pay-per-views is in Glasgow, Scotland. That's correct. I got to think, I got to think Drew McIntyre is going to win the title that night. I, but yeah. And I think it's two months away. Yeah. That's, so, that's we'll in see. June. That's clash at the castle. I, I think they're going to give it back to him at that point, which is good. And, and it is well-deserved, yeah. but it, it does make for a lot of really interesting story opportunities to your point. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm not disappointed by that. Uh, obviously, Drew is going to feud with Punk here. Uh, well, he is currently yeah. feuding with him. As soon as they're both healthy enough to wrestle, we're going to see them go at it a couple times. But I do expect Drew to pull the title back in uh, in Scotland. All right. So next up was another tag match. Bobby Lashley, Angela Dawkins, Montez Ford against Karrion Cross, Akam, and Razor. 
this was a <laughs> Philadelphia street fight. Uh, you had Bub- you had Bubba Ray Dudley in there for some ECW action. It was fine. It was a schmaz. It was, you know, it, it wasn't as good as the ladder match from night one. Not even close. If we were talking about uh, an album, I would call this the filler because there, this was, yeah. there's, you know, good for these guys getting a, a paycheck and, and getting on the card at WrestleMania, but don't care. It has yeah. no stakes. This was Blitz. This was Blitz Ethereum, huh? Uh, no, <laughs> this was strung out. I think was it okay? It might. Yeah. It might be strung okay. out. This is this is the opportunity for the fans to go get popcorn or do whatever they need to do. It's. I mean, yeah. you need to build in those breaks, so I think that that makes yeah. sense. But ultimately, yeah, didn't care. Glad I got the uh, pick right, but ultimately, really, right, really terrible. Next up was L.A. Knight and AJ Styles. Was a really good match in my opinion, sure. but I will double down on what I said before. I think I said on the podcast, when it comes to LA Knight, I feel like I kind of slept through like eight months of giving a shit about him and he just kind of showed up and I'm supposed to care about him. He's, he's fine. He's charismatic. He's good in the ring. Like there's nothing wrong with him, but I just kind of don't know why I should care about him. I like, am I off base when it comes to LA Knight? I, I don't, no, like there's nothing wrong with him. He's 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 good on the stick. He's good in the ring. Like he he looks good. He looks the part. I just I for some reason I just don't care. Yeah, I have the same struggle with LA Knight. I think that he is good. I do think he he has uh, a lot of really good charisma. I think maybe the issue with him is they haven't paired him with the right person yet. Like they don't have a good program for him just yet aj was decent aj was a a, a good choice yeah. i i don't know i don't know where aj styles is in the business at, the, at this point like i feel like he he might be on his way out i mean he's old he, he's like our age or at least close to our he's age. our age yeah so he can't have too many years in front of him although he was fucking cut in that match like oh he's i've jacked. never seen him yeah. so ripped in my entire life so good for him but clearly he doesn't get a spot in, in the upper part of the card of, of WrestleMania. I like Ellie Knight. I think he's good. I think he's got potential. I just don't know if they've found the right fit for him yet in terms of a, of a good adversary, one that they could really yeah. build something around. It was not AJ Styles. I, I don't think that, I think AJ is pretty vanilla too, to be honest. I mean, he's, he's a great technical wrestler, but as a character, I don't care about him at all. Yeah. So AJ Styles is a year and a day younger than you are. Oh shit. June 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 2nd, 1970. Oh, June 2nd. That's a good day so, for you too. Yeah. Yes it is. So let, let me ask you a question. Now now that and this was not prepared, but as I'm as I'm looking through the card and I'm hearing kind of our commentary WrestleMania matches that don't have stakes to them whether it's a title or the bloodline storyline or those kind of things, we're, we're kind of meh on them. Right. So, so like what, what, what's different in WrestleMania 40 than say WrestleMania eight, nine, where at least my memory of them. And again, maybe I'm romanticizing that time in my life, but my memory was every match on those cards meant something is, is that, did they do a better job back then? Am I misremembering? Is there too many pay-per-views now where everything's watered down? Like what's, what's the difference? Because obviously if you throw a title in the match, it just matters. Right. But like AJ versus LA Knight is a perfect example. Like it's a match. It's a good match. It's two high quality performers. Right. But like, I don't know. Yeah, it's a match. It's like a Monday Night Raw match. You know what I mean? Like, so what's different? That's a really good question. I because it's funny because you're saying all this, and the first thing that pops into my head, and I don't know why, but it it does. I believe it was WrestleMania five. It was Jake the Snake versus Rick the Model Martel, and yeah. they had a really like that wasn't for a title, that wasn't for anything important, mm-hmm. but they had a really good build up to that match. That was the match where. Um, Rick or the bag over their head, right? right? Well, so Jake was blind, quote unquote, and uh Rick Martel had had sprayed him in the face with his his with arrogance, arrogance, 
with his cologne <laughs> and um you know jake went blind and so they had this match but they that's a good example of one that had a really good build up i thought and had a really good match at wrestlemania it was very different than anything else you would usually see but i i want to say that there are probably examples of matches that you could pull out of the older days that maybe didn't have as as much of a build up that i mean i don't know it's it's tough to answer on the spot, but I would say I bet it's more similar than you think off the top of your head because you know you could go back it, it in time is. and you could see is, yeah. a couple of matches that maybe just never really had any good build up. It was uh, I'm sure there's like a a Bushwhackers versus Skinner yeah, and the Mountie match right. that nobody gives a fuck or about. Coco yeah, beware yeah. and Dino yeah. Bravo and who gives right. a shit? You know that kind of thing. Yeah, but I mean those are clearly like undercard level. Uh, yeah. uh, matches on on a huge card like WrestleMania. I think I think the uh, just kind of talking through it. I think the other thing is the fact that while I like it, I think two nights dilutes the product. In, instead of having one match of you know ten matches on one night where everything matters, now we've got thirteen matches over two nights. You've got some filler. You've got a shit ton of commercials. Oh my god! Yeah. I noticed the commercials, yeah, big time this year more than more than I have. I don't know if I I don't know if I totally agree with that. I think that yes, I would agree with the fact that as it stands right now, there is some filler, a, a lot of filler in the two night format that they have. But I think they could get better with it. I mean, we have to keep in mind this is what the third or fourth year that they've done this in a two night format. I think they started during COVID, right? Yeah. I think they started during COVID. Yep. I think that they could really turn. I I think they're getting better year after year. Like the first year that it was two nights. I, I don't, I mean, I don't really have a lot of memories of there being anything that was substantial or super interesting, but you know, they're, they're improving as they're going along, I think. So I think if they really put some effort into it, the two night format could be really interesting. I mean, they, this is the first year that they actually did something and correct me if I'm wrong, because I very well could be, but they did something that connected the first night from the second night. Right. So they did that tag match with, with Cody and, and, and Seth and all that. Uh, They did that the first night and it had stakes into the second night. That's brilliant. That's what they need to focus on. What can we do to connect the first and the second nights of WrestleMania yep. so that people who watch the first night say, well, I have to tune in on the second night because now right. it's infinitely more interesting for whatever reason. So it's interesting that you say that. So th- this, I just look back. This is the one, two, three, four, five. This is the fifth year that they've done two nights of WrestleMania. Oh, no shit. Okay. Yeah, they started in 2019, 2020. Oh, they started 2020. Okay. And that was the year that it was in the performance center. So that was the first year of COVID. And then Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Then AT&T Stadium in Arlington last year in Inglewood, California. And then this year, I would have to go back and look at the cards I am firmly of the belief this year that night two was far superior than night one. Yes. I don't, I I seem to remember in previous years that night one was better. And I wonder if that is to your point this year that they connected, there was stakes from night one into night two. I don't know if they built the card differently. I, I don't know, but, um, like if, 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 if it was this year, right. And I had tickets to night one and not night two, I would be pissed. Yeah. Cause I, 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 I watched a clearly inferior show right. on night one. Yeah. That one um, lacked the energy uh, that, that yeah. the second night had. And, you know, obviously the second night's always going to have a little bit more energy sure, because it's, it's the last that's year, where yeah. the yeah. main event of the main events is going to be. But at the same time, like, this year felt like a a pretty big wedge between the two nights, like between the two nights, the first night was okay. The second night was spectacular. So yeah. 
uh, one other kind of housekeeping thing that I will say that I really love that they did. These nights didn't go super late. They were done by like right. 11 o'clock, yeah. which I, I can really appreciate because <laughs> I remember nights that you've been here and it's 1230 and they're still going oh my and we're God. hammered. Yeah. And we're like, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree so, with that. I, I, like, yeah, I appreciate that. The old man in me yeah, so. really likes the fact that they uh, <laughs> they, they're not keeping us up all hours on a on a school night. Right. Next up uh, might have been my favorite match of the night. Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, and Randy Orton. I know you didn't like the outcome. No, hate it. Purely from the in, but hate purely it. from the in ring perspective, I thought this was great. And I typically don't like three way dances. Yeah, I agree. I think it was a great match. I think it was a great story. I think I loved that. Uh, you know, Kevin Owens gave Randy Orton a ride down to the ring and. And it, it, as soon as it became a two on one thing, I'm like, oh, fuck, I know I'm losing this. I, I know yeah. I am because yeah. that's how they're going to play it. But I will say that I, I did like the match. I did not like the outcome because I really love Kevin Owens and I did pick him to win. I did not think they would give the belt to Randy. I did not think they would keep yep. it on Logan Paul. I I think that they made a pretty significant statement with uh, that match keeping the belt on Logan Paul by saying we're, we're behind this guy. Like we get it. He's, yeah. he's a part timer, but we are investing in that. And, and that's like, I thought he was going to lose the belt for sure, just because he was going to go off and do all of his other things. But yeah, you know, he, yeah, and not that he's not good, but just because he's, you know, he's got his hands in all kinds of different uh, business yeah. ventures. So I didn't expect to see him again until maybe, I don't know, like a couple of paper down Slam. the road, SummerSlam or even Survivor yeah. Series. Like it wouldn't surprise me if he just kind of popped in and out. But he seems like I, I don't know, full time's the right word, but he seems like he's going to be in it for the long haul. Yeah, I mean, you know, S S Logan Paul obviously started out or is best known. He's a celebrity, right? Um, he's a YouTube guy. He, he, yeah, he's a YouTube guy, but but he's got like billions of youtube views let's not kid around here he's he's bringing his audience to wwe he's putting more butts and seats and putting more eyes on the product than they would have without him for sure but he i mean can you think of a better quote-unquote celebrity wrestler that has ever bad bunny no i mean bad bunny was fine he he did some spots that were yeah. that were reputable yeah. and you know hats off to him but like logan paul yeah. looks like he's been doing i can't this think of one for a long he's, time yeah and this is like his like 10th or 11 match ever yeah he's phenomenal he's really good he's so good and yeah. it really shows that you know one thing we haven't talked about yet but wrestlemania 40 is really the introduction to uh you know a much bigger market in terms of advertising because we've got yes, it is we've got logan paul's prime printed on the mat on the mat and yeah. we've got advertisements on the turnbuckles and on the video screens and and all over the place like they've really taken it to the next level i mean they're, they're a big company now so that makes all yeah. the sense in the world i'm not even mad about it but like logan paul's prime no. was all over that broadcast yeah. And I will be honest with you, with the exception of what I considered too many commercials during the feed, the the stuff on the on the ring ropes and the mat and it didn't bother no, me at all. No, at, it didn't it didn't detract from the show at all. Again, too many commercials I thought in the feed, but other than that, it it didn't bother me at all. You know, it's NASCAR, baseball, yeah. it's everywhere. There's commercials. I agree with that. It was subtle yeah. enough that it yeah. didn't. Uh, it wasn't like. I don't know when I watch an NBA game and I see the the stuff on their jerseys and all that, like it, it really kind of gets to me. I don't know why it, it stands out, but for, Oh, does it, the NBA bothers you? It does yeah. a little bit, but I mean, yeah. I don't know if it's just being a purist or whatever, having, does you know, it, because that's interesting. Does their... it bother, does it bother you in college? Does it in the NCAA championships, like specifically, Do they put it on the their tournament? uniforms. I don't know, but like it's like everything is brought to you by B Dub. Well, no, I get that. Or, like, you know. there's going to be advertisements. Okay. I think the thing that really bothers me in the in in the NBA the is that their jerseys you. are branded with, okay. with, you know, all of their respective 
uh, advertisers. Okay. And so that's similar to what's happening in WWE now, but at the same time, it, it didn't seem that bad. Like I could forgive everything that they did. It wasn't yep. like a glowing flashing watermark on the on the ring right. it was like it was there but it was they didn't draw too much attention to it although you know the yeah the uh the rack on the side of the ring with all the prime bottles and all that stuff they went to that <laughs> a, a bit lot much. yeah but yeah. um yeah i'm i'm interested and we won't know for another year or so i'm interested to see how that potentially changes once they go to netflix I can only I don't imagine it it's going to be more. I don't think it will. I, I don't think it will either. It'll get more. Yeah, it's going to be more. It'll get the same. more. They've realized they can get away with it and they can do it tastefully. Yeah. They're going to, I mean, it's dollars. Yeah. It's money. Why would yeah. you not do that? Yeah. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. So, so one more thought, you know, again, Logan Paul is from Cleveland. So obviously he's going to be at SummerSlam in Cleveland. But yeah, I, it, it won't, it wouldn't have shocked me if we didn't see him until SummerSlam. The fact that they kept the belt on him, I think you're right. I think we're. I think he's going to be. I think he's going to be a, full, if not full time, more than part time wrestler yeah. in the WWE. And I'm and and that's a good, a very good thing because he's awesome. Yes, he so. he's very talented and he's very uh, polarizing. Like people love him yep. or hate him. Like he he's a good promoter, is what he is. And if you see that uh, documentary about him and his brother on Netflix, it's it's phenomenal. It's very, very insightful on, uh, well, I think the documentary is on his brother, Jake, but the, uh, yeah. you know, they talk a lot about both of them and and how they came up and everything they did through YouTube and all that stuff. But it's it's pretty fascinating. And yeah, he's, he's great at what he does. Next up was, I, again, was, a, was an interesting match, but I think it was a good match. Bailey and... EO Sky Bailey wins. It's I, I didn't realize it. It's her first singles match at WrestleMania, which yeah, kind of boggles my mind. But Bailey's awesome. I mean, she is like it's gonna sound silly, but I think she's underrated. She is a really, really top tier performer, in my opinion. And I was glad that she won. This match was interesting for me. I I was always thinking that Bailey was going to win. I, I don't know. It was it was a little bit disjointed, and I don't know if that was just Bailey was selling was actually hurt. Io Sky to me is not a viable champion. She never was. I don't know. What what do you, what'd you think about this one? It was a good match. I didn't have any problems with yeah. it. I felt very confident that Bailey was going to win, and was happy to get to that conclusion sooner than later. I know that Bailey had some kind of a new like outfit entrance, all that kind of stuff. It was a little weird. I feel like all the entrances were a little bit extravagant. It, you know, it, I mean, they always are at WrestleMania, but for whatever reason, some of these felt odd, oddly extravagant, if that yeah. makes any sense. And like Bailey had this weird sort of, I don't know, was it like an Egyptian theme or something? It was, it was kind of weird, but yeah. And I don't, and and if there was a reason for that, I don't know what it was, but yeah. 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 It was, but it was yeah. fine. It, it was a decent match. I'm glad she won. Uh, but like I was ready to move on. Like I like her as yeah. a talent, but there are other, other people in the women's division that I, I enjoy watching more. Under. Sure. Yeah. That's fair. Last, but certainly not least. I mean, we could, if we wanted to, we could do an entire podcast about this, this match alone. Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns, the second time in a row in the main event, Cody Rhodes finishes the story with a little help from his friends along the way. All of it's legal because it's bloodline rules. Before I tell you my thoughts, I'll, I'll open this one up to you. What, tell me, tell me your thoughts on this main event. What do you think? So I th thought it was a great match. I thought they did the best that they could with the resources that they had to make a really fun experience out of this whole thing. I'm glad that Cody won. I like Cody. I think that it's about time that a baby face gets a championship and I'm happy about that. I will say that um, the individuals that showed up, the People that helped out uh, that Cody along the way were it, it was fun. It was really good. 
uh, you know, like uh, Jay Uso shows up to uh, to fend off Jimmy and uh, John Cena shows up, which was great. I love the John Cena. I just fucking love John Cena. I love that he shows up and does a spot with Solo and then, you know, he gets hammered by the rock. And then the set thing was really weird. And we'll, I guess I think we'll get to that. But yep. ultimately, I think that this was very interesting because it was like this is how they're ushering the, this new era of the WWE in, which is to give this title to Cody and and to see kind of where things go at this point. And I, I like Cody's story. I like everything about it. I don't know. I just I thought it was one of the more satisfying main events that we've had at a WrestleMania in a handful of years. So overall, I, I think it was a really solid match. I was really disappointed last year that Cody didn't win. I was shocked. I thought for sure he was going to win. Same. I still think he probably should have won that. Like in retrospect, I think he should have won that match. That being said, if he doesn't, if he wins that match, we don't get this one. Exactly. And this one, and this one was really special because we had an entire another year of, of Roman, not, not dodging Cody because because Roman put his work in this year. Um, he had a couple defenses this year, but you can, it, it really does. You can tell the story of he's held the belt for what was it? Three years. Um, four actually. Was it four I years? I think it was yeah. four. I think um, Roman had it four years. I still am not sure that I am behind Cody Rhodes the way they want me to be. Cody Rhodes to me still doesn't look like the what what I would consider kind of a prototypical WWE WWF champion. Okay. Right? And, and maybe that's because I was I was born and raised in the in the in the era of big men, you know, like larger than life champions, Hulk Hogan, Iron Sheik, you know, like Undertaker, the, these guys that are six foot 10, 400, 300 pounds, or Hulk Hogan, it's the 27 inch pie, you know, like Cody Rhodes to me looks like a dude, you know, he's kind of like that CM Punk AJ style. Like he, they look like dudes. Sure. And again, like I'm a, I'm a fat alcoholic, 47 year old you know like whatever <laughs> so like, so i'm not judging but you know you know so i don't know i cody Rhodes to me isn't quite like the superhero that i've always thought even even triple h or you know like those guys are larger than life and cody Rhodes to me might, maybe isn't there but i thought this story was wonderfully done this match was outstanding my one bitch about this main event I think the Undertaker spot should have been Austin. It would have made more sense if it was Steve Austin. I think it was supposed to be. I think I, I think yeah. they didn't come to terms. I know I, I think maybe it was a financial maybe. thing that didn't yeah. work out. That's that's my assumption. That's my guess, but I don't know. But but other than that, like it was almost perfect. I mean, it, and and we touched on the Seth Rollins thing, and I didn't really catch it. That night, I, I had to go back and rewatch it to truly understand the importance of Seth Rollins in this match. And, and we can talk about it in a minute, but. But I think it was almost perfect. I think they've got so many storylines coming out of this match. It was an outstanding way to end WrestleMania 40. I think I think it's a story that couldn't have been told or wouldn't have been told if Vince was in charge. And so I have to give all sorts of credit to Triple H and whoever's making these decisions. It was a really good way to end WrestleMania 40. I I, I could I can't gush enough about how good it was. Yeah. I I agree. I think the ending was very solid. It was very satisfying. It was an ending that was apropos for the 40th anniversary of this event. I think I would agree. I, I liked the, you know, end game style uh, finish that this one had when all these people came out, we knew it was going to be 
bloodline rules. We had no doubt about that. Yeah. We knew we were going to see Solo. We knew we were going to see Jimmy, you know, and and some of these characters. We knew The Rock was going to come back out. There was no doubt about that. So I agree. I think that that was all really well done. The Rollins thing is very weird to me, and I don't know why, and I'm I'm not sure if I can put my finger on it but i think it had to do with maybe maybe the cameraman's to blame i don't know but like when the he fucked when up. the music yes, he hits it. and the shield music yeah. hits and i think it was supposed to be much more impactful than that because when this whole thing went down uh or, you know when when the shield music hit and i'm like wait what what's happening here like i think obviously it's rollins but I don't understand what's happening. Why is the shield music playing? Why is he coming out dressed in his flak jacket and all that stuff? And I think yep. that it goes back to when he says, Cody, I will be your shield, you know, like that's, does. that's yeah. probably what it is, but that whole sort of reference was squandered on, on that because he comes in after uh, Cena and he comes in after uh Jay, after take after jay uso and all that and it's like the cameraman missed it all like he got clobbered with a chair or no i'm sorry roman hit him with a spear i think superman superman punch yeah, or yeah. whatever i yeah roman hit him before yep. he had a chance to hit rock but like the cameraman never even showed him so it's like other than the music i didn't even know seth rollins was even there so they they yeah. fucked that up i think that was just a, a coordination thing on their part but that to me was a little disappointing because it had basically zero part. I mean, he got in the ring, but he didn't do anything. Like he got knocked out immediately. Like John Cena came in, he did so, an attitude adjustment. Uh, right. You know, the Undertaker came in and did a choke slam. Seth Rollins did nothing. He did nothing but get clobbered and roll out of the ring. And, unless I'm missing something or a, you know a key story element, which is entirely possible, but. That was entire. That was hugely disappointing because he was supposed to be Cody Shield, but he yep. barely kind of not at all did that. Well, that's exactly what I thought the first time I watched it. Like exactly, I was like, "What the fuck happened?" Seth did nothing. The cameraman fucked it up. He missed it. Yes, exactly. I think what, and maybe I'm just reading into something, and you know, I think what he did though was. To your point, he said, Cody, I will be your shield. And what he did was he got into the ring and he got the chair and he left the chair in the ring. And he so if you remember. Way back in the day when he turned on Roman. And Dean Ambrose. He Seth Rollins hit. Roman in the back of the in the back with a chair right to effectively end the shield and i think the story that they were telling and i don't know that they necessarily explained it or did a great job of it was that that was kind of the beginning of the heel roman reigns and seth kind of created through his actions of breaking up the shield he created this version of Roman and he knew that Roman would not be able to be in the ring with a chair in his hand with Seth right there. Cause he did, he had the chance he could have hit Cody with that chair yeah. and he chose to hit Seth instead, which then led to Cody being able to get the win. I might be reading way more into it, but I think, I think that's the story that they're trying to tell. That's a great that Seth sacrificed himself to be Cody's shield because he knew Roman would take the bait, for lack of a better term, and get and allow him to get the win. I think that's the story they're trying to tell. That makes a lot of sense, and that is a great story. They did not do a good job of telling that uh, yeah. story. I, yeah, I don't know that they did a great job, but I. I think that's what they're trying to tell. Okay, fair enough. But either way, it, I think we both agree. It was a great match. It was a phenomenal yeah. ending. They had the whole, uh, you know, Cody Rhodes wins the belt. All the all the good guys yep. come out and hoist him up, and everybody's cheering and celebrating. And, of course, there's a lot of 
pageantry and and celebration around uh, the Rhodes family and Dusty and all this stuff and and it, a lot of emotions. His mom's in the ring. Everything is yes. is really um, really powerful at that moment. So I I thought that was a really solid ending to this landmark anniversary WrestleMania. Yeah, it was it was it was very very much WrestleMania ten Bret Hart yeah. in the ring. Yeah. On you know like that that kind of thing. Where do we go? Who's who is Cody's first feud with coming out of WrestleMania? Mm. And 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 I guess I'll preface this by saying so the if you did you watch Raw? Yeah, some of it, not all of it. Okay, but I so did watch it, yeah. So I'll preface this by saying so Rock came out, cut a promo, right, saw that effectively said I'm I'm going away for a while. So I'm of the belief that we're going to get maybe rock and Cody at SummerSlam or, or maybe next year's WrestleMania. WrestleMania. It's not going to be, it's not going to be, it's not going to be, yeah. not going to be right away. Right. So the question becomes, who does, who does Cody with feud with coming out of WrestleMania? Mm. Directly out of WrestleMania. Uh, this is one of those times where I think the answer isn't obvious. This is, it's going to be a situation where he comes out on raw next Monday and starts yeah. talking and then somebody random like Bronson Reed comes out and says, I want to go against you. And yeah, and they do like a little mini program. I don't think he's got anything serious. I think he could feud with Seth Rollins. I think Seth could turn heel and do that kind of thing. I don't think it's going to be soon, but I could see that being yeah. a future opportunity. I also think that Gunther will get involved at some point, but I would wait if I were them to do that because I could see him being the next champion. I could see him being the one that dethrones Cody. And if they do that, they need to wait. They they shouldn't do it right away or they're going to shit all over everything that they built up for the last six to 12 months. Yeah, I, I would, I would tend to agree with that. Right. I mean, it's like you've had Cody dethrone a champion that has been, that has had the belt for almost four years. You, you can't let Cody hold it for a month. Like oh, he, no. he's like, he's not going to, he's not going to hold it for multiple years. I don't think, but you got to let him hold it. I for, think he'll like, hold it until WrestleMania. I, at least until WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I think I so. Mean, I mean, it depends. Yeah. I mean, it, one thing that we've learned about the wrestling business is that they listen to the fans, right? So if the fans yeah, turn on true. Cody in two weeks and then they're, heavy on him that's true and he decides not to turn heel then eventually they're going to take that belt off of him i mean that's that's, yeah, that's what happened true. with the ultimate warrior right like everybody thought he was yeah he was the next thing after hulk hogan and the fans just weren't into it they didn't give a shit after yeah. he got the belt so they you took know, it off him you know yeah you know i i suppose you might be able to make an argument too that you know is is cody rhodes better chasing the belt than he is holding the belt for sure uh, yeah well, i don't for know sure I mean, he is every good guy is know. better chasing the belt right. than holding yeah. the belt uh i mean right. aside from maybe hulk hogan but that was at a very different time 30 yes. years ago so mm -hmm. those times yeah. have changed because i think and this was going to be you know i had a, a series of questions that i wanted to ask you but this was yeah go ahead one of them um you know how long before the crowd turns on cody in the same way that they did on cena and the same way that they have on on lots of baby faces like that this stick can only last so long if he doesn't have an opponent that is worthy of you know his time yeah i i i think the answer to that really depends on how often we see cody if we see cody every week every week on raw i mean i i think you're going to start to see, hear boos but we have to, right? Summer because Slam. Roman's not yeah. going to be on. He's going to disappear, right. probably. Right. He's going to go do a movie or do something. I guarantee Roman's yeah. probably gone until SummerSlam. At, I'm sorry, uh, Survivor Series at minimum, I think. I bet we, think so? I bet we don't, we'll don't see or hear from Roman for a while. I That's a, that's a guess, because yeah. I think that when they bring him back, they're going to bring him back as you know a contender. Like, he's going to come back out of it. He's not going to yeah. go back and start fighting you know, the Dolph Ziggler's of the world. No offense to Dolph. He's not in the WWE anymore anyways, but you know what I yeah. mean? Like he's not going to be fighting the Miz or R-Truth or 
Um, you know, those I, guys. I, st- I still think there's massive money to be made with rock and um, rock and Roman. I, I think that match. I think there is too, but they've already established that rock is going to go away and they've never created any proper friction between no tension. Yeah. Rock and Roman. So I think, uh, I think rock disappears until next WrestleMania. I, I somehow they work him. You in. think so? I think he's gone in for another year until um, hmm. WrestleMania. And I think, cause I think people, I think by then people will want Cody versus rock more than Roman versus rock. Cause now that Roman doesn't have the belt. It's not as, a, yeah. as attractive of a matchup as uh, Cody and rock. Yeah. I think, I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah. No, it's, no, it's interesting. I, I think the reason that there's, that there's value there between rock and Roman is because of the bloodline. You know, they could play the whole, mm-hmm. who's the head of the table, who, you know, they like could. that kind of thing. They could. Yeah. Um, but the bloodline almost feels like it's dissolved at this point. Cause rock's I, going away. I, I think it, Roman's I think it kind probably going to yeah. take a break. Who's that leave Jimmy and solo. Like who gives a shit about yeah, those? You're, I mean, no, you're right. Yeah. You, no, you're right. I don't know. I don't think it's a faction that people will invest themselves in at this point without, yeah without someone like Roman or the rock. Did, did anybody on Monday step up to Damian priest and his title? Mm, I don't think so. I didn't, I, watch I didn't, I didn't, watch I didn't see it, but I don't think so. I think he might've done a promo, okay. but I don't believe anyone has done that yet. Okay. And there's, and there's a draft coming up too, isn't there? Are they doing that still? I don't know. I think they're doing a draft, which, which, which would mean I would think, you got to get either Damien or Cody off raw. You can't have both titles on raw. True. Right. Yeah. In which case you got to get Damien off raw. And I, I can't right. imagine they're going to keep the bell on him much longer anyway. So pushing him over to SmackDown, not a big deal in my opinion. Yeah. I don't think so. Um, you split up the tag titles yeah. at this point. You'll probably yeah. split everything else. Yeah. So that means you've got the U S title on, Logan, you've got the IC title on Sammy. You figure you put one of those on SmackDown, one of them on Raw. You've got two women's title. What you got, Rhea Ripley mm-hmm. and Bailey. I would imagine you put Bailey over on SmackDown. You keep Rhea on Raw. Yeah. I I, I think from a I think Sammy's next challenger I think is going to be Chad Gable. I think he's going to turn on I do too. the guy that trained him up. I you know, and I think that'll be a really good program actually. It'll be a how dare he, you. He reminds me yeah. yeah, he reminds me a lot of of Kurt Angle. You know what I mean? Like Oh, for sure. Like I wanted Chad you know, Gable to win um, the belt from Gunther. I, I yeah. did. Really. Yeah. Like I get why they didn't put it on him, but at the same time I'm like right. God, those were great matches. They were better than the Sammy matches mm-hmm. were with Gunther, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, I love pro wrestling. The, you know, the, the speak, I, and I didn't do that on purpose. One of the things that Michael Cole said on the mic at the end of WrestleMania was just that. I love professional wrestling. And that has been one of those things you weren't allowed to say the words professional wrestling yeah. during the Vince McMahon era. And, you know, it was always sports entertainment. It wasn't pro wrestling. And to kind of circle back around to our discussion at the beginning, I think they're really doing a lot to distance themselves from Vince yeah, and to change a lot of those unwritten rules. And I, I think in my opinion, and again, this is nothing against Vince. I think those are good changes at this point in 2024. Yeah. I, I think yeah. the, the entire vibe of the WWE right now is heading in a really positive direction. They've got the financial backing that they need. They've got somebody who's smart and experienced running this company at this point. And I think they need to take those and, you know, those advantages and run with them. And I do believe that we're seeing a bit of a paradigm shift between the old school days and and what this new era is going to look like. And I think it's good. I think it's great actually. And that's what we needed. I think we needed it a long time ago. I think Vince could have stood to perhaps step down about 10 yeah. years sooner and allow the powers that be, or, you know, allow the next generation to, to come up and, and, 
you know, make their own decisions and do their own things. Yeah. And, and if he, and if he did, you know, he, he, this, this lawsuit may or may not have ever come to light. So here's what I want to ask you. And this is a conversation that I have with my wife and my daughters around the dinner table. Almost every night we discuss our high lows and water buffaloes. Have you ever done this thing? Have you ever heard of this? Uh, something similar maybe, but not quite exactly okay. this. So tell me what. So high and low is pretty simple. What what is your high? Yeah. What is your low? And your water buffalo is really like what is weird? Like what is the the most random, weird, okay. unexpected thing? So what are your high? I, I'm putting you on the spot. So if you want me to go first, I can. But what are your high lows and water buffaloes from WrestleMania 40 this year? I mean, I I think the high has to be Cody Rhodes winning the title. Just the the, the whole main event, uh, the fact that it's two years in the making, the fact that you got to see John Cena, you got to see the Undertaker, you got to see the Avenger style like portals, everybody come out, you know that that kind of thing. I think there are better matches on the night. I think there are better things that I enjoyed more. But I think that's that's got to be the high. Like there's there's nothing that comes close to that. That's when you think about WrestleMania 40, 20 years from now, you're going to you're going to think about that culmination of the two year bloodline storyline. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. What about your low? What would you say would be your low from WrestleMania weekend? Well, that's a good question. I, I hate to say it, but like. It, it would it would either be. It doesn't have to be a match specifically, I, I, but just an event or a thing that happened. Um, I I really didn't enjoy the 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 six man ladies tag match. The I just I didn't I just really didn't enjoy that that and the and Jay and Jimmy Uso and I hate to say that because I really should have enjoyed that match. Yeah. Yeah, th- th- those two would probably be a tie for me. How about you? Okay. Well, well, hold on. You're not done yet. What's your water buffalo? Oh, what's your what's your like? Holy crap! Or didn't expect that? Or just totally weird? Like what? WTF? I, you know, I I I I think it's I think it's that the fact that the Undertaker is in that last match instead of Steve yeah, Austin. Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. You know, the 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 fact that Steve Austin was not on that show. Mm. The fact that we didn't get Hulk Hogan. We didn't get. Like we didn't get these like any like the fact that Hogan wasn't on that show. Oh, you're stealing my even thunder. In a in a fucking skybox somewhere. Yeah. Was it, it's tough to say that that was a bad show, but like like where where were the where were the surprise legends? Where were the you know what I mean? Like I don't know, but I I, I guess that if if it's one thing, it's the fact that that was that was Taker instead of Austin. That would be the one. Okay, thing. all right. Yeah, and I I think I'm I'm very much in line with you. My high was the uh, the main event. It was it was well built, uh, you know, from a storyline perspective over the last year, and they finished it very very well. My low was probably the uh, <laughs> my low was probably that Jimmy J match, just because I don't understand why yeah. they did what they did. Not only was it not a great match, but it just made no sense to put Jay over when he's one of the yeah. most over guys in the the company already and then i think actually that's what i had in my notes uh because i cheated and i i came up with this ahead of time and, and put you on the spot but like the fact that hulk hogan wasn't there at wrestlemania 40 was an absolute fucking facepalm to me and yeah. i had this conversation with some some other people who are wrestling fans and they're like well i think that they're clearly trying to you know, bring in a new era and they're, they're trying to not lean on the past as much and do all that stuff. And I, and I agree. I think, I, I think that is what they're doing too. But if there is any moment in the history of this business to, to bring out everybody who helped make this business, what it is, it is a, a 40th anniversary yeah. of WrestleMania. And the fact that they have been promoting 40 years of Hulkamania, right? Like that, that's been a thing like that. You, you go on the WWE shop website and, and look up Hulk Hogan and all his merchandise. And it's all like this 40th anniversary, 40th anniversary. Like you're telling me they couldn't fit him in here, or maybe they didn't want to pay him. Maybe it's just, they didn't come into an agreement with them. I, I have no idea what happened, but the show as much as it was heavy on endorsements and heavy on story and all that stuff, it was very light on nostalgia. 
And yeah, again, al- maybe, almost none. maybe that was intentional. And, and I respect it if that's the direction they were taking. But this is the one show where I feel like it's OK to do that. You know, it's the 40th yeah. anniversary. Why not trot out somebody who was at the very first WrestleMania? Like, mm-hmm. that's mind blowing to me that they didn't do that. And Hogan was there in Philadelphia. He was there at the, I think the WWE world or or whatever, signing autographs and doing all that stuff. So you're telling me they couldn't find a spot for him to grab a mic and say, you know, a couple of his catchphrases during the show and just, that's it. Like, I, 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 yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it. I, I would have to go back to that original card to see who else is still even alive. Well, you got guys, I mean, Tito Santana, I'm, pretty sure yeah. or maybe that was the second wrestlemania yeah there there may not be a whole lot of them but there are certainly a couple of them. yeah but they're there they could have invited mr there. t for god's yeah. sakes they could have uh yeah. is yeah wait did paul and dwarf just die i feel like he might have just died he did okay yeah i think he did but i mean but yeah but it, but it, yeah but yeah again it's it's um, there. before we wrap i and i think i don't know if it was I don't know if I talked to you about this or my brother, Samantha Irvin on the mic. So the ring announcer she's for the, so good. God damn. She's amazing. She is the best. She's so good. She really is. I was going to say, so it must've been Mark that I was talking to. Is, is she the best? Like when you think about ring announcers, you've got, when you're talking about all time, you've got Lillian Garcia, you've got Howard Finkel. Yeah. And you've got her, right. Who, I, I think she might be my favorite. I, she's amazing. She, she's really, really good. I mean, Finkel holds a, a place in my heart because sure. nostalgia. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. the one that I heard for all of my younger years. And, and you know, he, he did it for a long time, but she is yeah. so good. And she seems like a really sweet person. And, and she gets recognized like Cody's like, Hey, Samantha, can you say my thing again? And like, it, it's yeah. like, I appreciate the fact that she gets called out and she's recognized and she is really fantastic at what she does. And yeah. when she announced Cody's championship, like you could, you could hear her was breaking awesome. up. So like she was crying yeah. while she was doing it, which sounds yeah. really silly. Like I, I, I get that that sounds goofy, but like, it was like, she was trying so hard to to put herself out there and she couldn't do yeah. it because she was so emotional after what had happened. And it's just, it was a beautiful moment. I thought it was really, really cool. All right. Well, Hey, that's, that's a wrap on WrestleMania 40. I think it is. Um, yeah. I, again, it was a great show. I was the only thing that would have made it better is if you were here uh, to enjoy it with me. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you know what your spring break schedule is next year, but if we can get you here, we'll get you I'll, here. If not, we'll do what we did. Again. I'll do it. If I can, you know, I will. Yeah. All right. Uh, All of that being said, that's Mr. Pip. I'm Chewy. This has been the 411 from 406. Aloha means goodbye. (laughs) We'll talk to you soon. Adios. (laughs) Adios.